Powell here with more Space Engineers, and uh, we're going to follow up with Wednesday's video here. I just want to show you something really quick. So if we go in here, we look grid mass 65k, look at our inventory for the entire thing. I've gone ahead uh, reduced it back to the 42.2 because I think I figured out how they're dealing with the mass in uh, the newest version. Because if we come over here and we remove that thruster, ship still floats. So what I think they're actually doing is, you know, we were talking last time about the way that mass is, is calculated. I think what they're actually doing is they're not scaling the mass, they're scaling the thruster. So I don't, th let me see here, let's find, uh, where is our, oh, it's because I've got it hidden, don't I? Ha 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 ha. That's right. Where's our, large atmospheric thruster. So it doesn't look like they're changing the power requirements. And as far as I can tell, they're not changing the, at least the stated value of the thrust available on it. The only thing that I'm, th the only thing I can come up with it with this is that um, the mass is actually accurate, but the thruster is being scaled for output purposes. Um, which would explain why when you are in realistic, that 42K is too much for the thruster, but when you take it up to say times three, times five, times 10, this thruster becomes more and more powerful. Because as you saw, we have, you know, that one thruster in a times 10 scenario, lifting mass that the thruster, the same thruster can't lift in realistic. So the only thing I can I can take from that is that the 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 newton force of the thruster is being modified by that uh whatever the multiplier is it's not actually the mass of the ship that's changing it's the thrust output all right anyway on to more interesting things and another one of those people talk about but i don't think everyone understands exactly what's going on here wind turbines all right, so I've heard everything from you can't have them sitting next to each other to they can't be below or above a certain height or they can't be underground. Well, yes and no. So there's actually two things that go on with the the thrust or with the thrusters <laughs> with the wind turbines. They do a collision check for both grids and voxels. So grids don't impact the optimization um, detection, but they do impact the amount of power that can be generated at the max power rating. So for example here, these in order are turbine, turbine two, three, four, five, and six. So if you come over here and look at the panel, you'll notice turbine one has 186, just almost 187 kilowatt potential output, but it has poor clearance, right? Because there's another turbine right here, and this turbine actually has uh, blocks that are within, I, I want to say it's seven or nine, I think, I think it was nine was the, uh, the optimal range. So, but because you have them within that range, it's impacting the power output. The um, optimal placement value, which also impacts the power generation, is based off the voxels, the voxel train that are within close proximity. Now, to better illustrate that, if you notice the second group, so generator, turbine three and turbine four, Turbine three is good clearance, where turbine four is poor clearance, and it's literally a difference of one block in elevation. However, this one is because it's on its side. So we'll talk about that in just a second. Going down to the, the last set, uh, turbines five and six, you'll notice both of them are optimal. 
but look at the difference in wind uh, generation because of the location and position of the the uh, turbine you know you're talking almost what is that 60 uh, da -da 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 -da, quick calculations that's yeah like 60 difference in kilowatts that's a significant difference in power generation so what you're going to want to do is you want to make sure that these are always placed away from each other right at least that's the way keen wants you to to do it now what you can do is bring these out one block off of your your mounting spire so that'll be gen or turbine seven all right and watch what the difference is in the turbine 422 versus 389 so just moving it up one and out one increases your power rather significantly now the other catch is their detection system only works from the sides so uh so north south east west and below not above uh, so let's see that's turbine seven or yeah turbine seven right so it's 422 at 280. Uh, we are going to let me find a pen. <laughs> and we're going to make a note of that because we want to test this and make sure everything is working out the way we think it is, right? So we've got, if I can get the pen the right, uh, 422, we're just going to, and at 280 is what it's currently so it's optimal right now right so the little catch to this is if we go two three four five right because it's one out two three so and four it's one two three four so we need one two three four and we're gonna run up another one here we're gonna do the block here so that's seven eight nine so now if we look at seven and nine you notice the output has not changed, right? So you're 422. We have to wait for this to scroll again, or else I have to make it really small. And uh, it's going to hurt everybody's eyes. So 422.30. So the out max output hasn't changed. Turbine nine is 422.66. So effectively, they are not interfering with each other. Now, if we go like so. One, two. So we should be able to do that. So nine and ten. So we saw four twenty two sixty six on nine. So generator turbine nine is now three sixty nine and three sixty nine. Right. So using this little trick you can actually make really dense wind farms because what you can do is you then say something like this and the reason you're putting these blocks in is because the turbines have such a huge footprint this allows you to get them as close together as possible to maximize your your wind potential now Remember, this one should be about 422, right? That was uh, number 10. Let's take a look really quick. So number seven is back to 422. Number t nine is, so it'll actually be a number 11, so 423, 423, 423. So now if you 
rinse and repeat this process because of the fact that these are actually these two spires are nine blocks apart that'll keep you optimal on the side to side checks as well as the voxel checks so you can actually maximize your power like this so as you can see you can get really dense power systems in a very small footprint which you know that's to be fair keen doesn't want you doing this but hey it's in the game we're going to use it right so the other one let's talk about subterranean wind farms because everybody that i have talked to seems to believe that this doesn't work so let's check we're gonna head down as you can tell i have created a pit it's a rather large pit and we're gonna come down here to the bottom because what we're gonna do is we're going to use our little exploit here and if you really want to be funny you can always put another block in here but not necessary all right so if we go one block there one there one there because we've already shown that these will not interfere with each other if you've got them like this right okay so we've just added four more turbines. And let's see what the power output looks like. We're going to scroll all the way down to the bottom of our turbine list. There you go. 457. 457, 457, 457. And look, they're completely underground. Because what happens is, and I think this is where a lot of people get confused on it, because Keen says this shouldn't work either. <laughs> <laughs> and by rights, it shouldn't. Yeah. However, space engineers being space engineers, it does. So the reason it does this is because, again, it's only looking for voxel collision and terrain and uh, structure collision on the sides and on the bottom. It's not looking to the top. So as long as you keep the voxels away from the sides or the bottom uh, by at least nine cubes length uh, large blocks larger blocks um, which is what I want to say 27 meters right something like that um, you'll get full output on these things and then you know just to show once again going to wind turbines here Clearance is optimal all the way down the line. So if you want to build a, a secret base, take a couple of warheads with you, clear out some big areas, and then basically duplicate your, <laughs> your high-density wind farm underground. Uh, let's see here. Let's go 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And we're going to go over here and then just so if people know i actually am in survival mode um the save is a survival game but i am doing i i have put myself into creative mode all right so 18 was the last one before so that's going to be 19 20 21 22 and 23 right everything looks like it's working not seeing any problems causing from terrain or anything so let's see how much clearance we have right, so optimal clearance 452 457 457 457 so the third one that we placed so we want one, two, three the voxel detection hits so now if we go like this let's uh let's bring this in just a little bit let's go 25 
There we go. Now if we go check again. All of them should be in the, the same range now. So 19 is optimal, 457, 452, optimal, optimal, yeah. So just gives you an idea what you can do. All right, so I am going to leave this one here. See, I didn't get the, I didn't get, the, <clears throat> excuse me. I didn't get the, uh, the voxels right. So uh, if I clear those out, it'll open up the power, but this gives you an idea of some of the things that you can do and just how densely packed you can get your, your power generation, even underground. <laughs> and I will apologize in advance if Keen sees this and decides to change the, uh, the algorithm because, <laughs> because I've, I've seen some really well-known content creators saying this is impossible, that this, this doesn't work. Um, it does. We just, a lot of people don't talk about it because we don't want Keen to fix it. Because it is a very easy way to have a lot of power generation without it being exposed to everything. All right. So on that note, we're going to get out of here. I hope you all enjoyed this. If you did, make sure you hit that like button. If you are new to the channel, haven't done so already, be sure to subscribe to see more of my space engineer shenanigans. And on Monday, we should be back into some normal gameplay stuff <laughs> i know i've already had people asking about season three for the extreme survival yeah we're not going to be touching that again until probably july uh we're going with a little bit more of a scripted system this time so it's going to be a lot more set building and stuff that we have to deal with so anyway uh, i'm going to get out of here i hope you all have a fantastic day enjoy your weekend and uh, as always folks take care and be safe out there everyone I wonder how much power we have total coming in here. Let's see. Fuel critical. Give me my power total. <laughs> it's getting close. You know what? faster to do that. I'm just kind of curious to see how much power we've got here. Oh, there it goes. Uh, you know, 8.8 .8 megawatts, not too bad. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, have fun everybody.